Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're obviously going to be doing my everyday makeup routine. I got some compliments from my last video, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. There was a little bit of egg yolk blindness in the last one. I'll try not to, I mean, obviously the makeup is done, so we'll see, but I tried to not be so crazy with it this time, because last time when I was editing, I was like, oh, why do my under eyes look like that? It's okay. It's fine. I clocked myself for it. It's okay. I'm using a new camera today, so if I look uglier than usual, I'm blaming the camera. Obviously, before you apply makeup, you should definitely be prepping your skin. I also don't wear primer because I personally think that my skin prep is just so good that I don't need it. This is what I've been using the past couple days to prep my skin for makeup. I've heard really good things about these. Also, I'm not gonna apply it on camera again because I've already applied it in the morning right when I wake up, but this is what I use, this first. The second after that, of course, you have to moisturize. So lately I've been using this green tomato cream. It's really good for your pores. Also very lightweight. Anything with this kind of consistency, I'm like, Surely it's water-based, right? Depending on the day, I'll either use this or this. This is for whenever my skin is really dry and I really need my makeup to look glowy. This I use today because my skin isn't too dry today. Honestly, I could reapply this right now because it is the last step in skincare. I like using it because it creates like this almost semi-matte base or this smooth base for your makeup. Now we can get into the actual makeup. Why is my hairline so much further back on this side than on this side? Let me just cover that really quick so that you guys don't have to see. This is what we're working with. These are the products that I use almost every day, the ones that I do not switch out most of the time. Some, actually, that's a lie, some of them I do, but. Also, don't look at my nubs, I ripped off my nails. I mentioned this in my favorites video, but I really like this cushion lately. Um, I think it's really good for the summer and I honestly think maybe I'm using too much because I've seen people use a lot less and make it go a long way but I have a lot of discoloration on my face like around my mouth, under my eyes, the redness around my nose so my forehead has always been darker than the rest of my face but that forehead be catching, be catching all the light. No, no. I literally saw some fucking dead skin peeling on my nose because I didn't use the Mixun bean paste today. Kind of lazy, but I still wanted to buzz this video. So to rehydrate my skin, while the fucking skin on my nose is peeling off, I used the M Cosmetics Divine Water Perfecting Mist. And this spray, it's a setting spray, it's a priming spray, it's a hydration, a hydrating, dewy, whatever spray, it's everything in a bottle. But it helped with the crusties that were coming off of my nose, I did not want to start over. And usually I would stop here and go straight straight into powder but I have like this little scar on my nose that looks like it would probably be a mole but it's not it's a scar so I'm going in with the Clio Kill Cover Found Wear Concealer now, I'll usually mix it up between this the Hourglass Concealer or the Unleashio one because all of them have a very creamy formula I don't get super close under my eyes anymore because I feel like that makes my eyes look smaller. I'm gonna add shadow there anyway to make it darker so there's no point in wasting product there. I think in my next video I want to film a girl talk so if you guys have any topics or questions that you would like me to talk about let me know in the comments below. Dr. Seuss who? We have the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I lightly dust that over. Usually throughout the day I could do this look in like I would say 15 minutes max, but because I'm taking my time today. I'm using the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Bronzing Powder. I used to really like using the Hourglass Bronzer, but this I find I like more. The shade is more similar to my skin tone, I guess. It warms it up without making me look orange. I just put that all over my jaw, or pretty much on like the edges of my face just to bring that warmth back. I was worried that people are watching me outside. This whole apartment is like floor to ceiling window, so I'm always concerned that the people in buildings across from me can see what the fuck I'm doing and hopefully they're not trying to put me on influencers in the wild because bitch I'm in my house. I also just finished reading the second book from the Akatar series. Never thought I would be into reading but I think um, what I like about it so far is when I'm done reading the book I'll put it on my shelf and I just look at him like, damn, there's like a whole advent. There are like multiple adventures in that little thing. It's crazy. Nobody even knows what's in there until you read it. 
Y'all know I love my cool contour, okay? Cool tone contour. And I'll use this little brush here. I don't like anything that's too dense for this. Little loose brushes like this are easier to control. And it's okay if a lot of it doesn't show up right away because it's easier to build things up than to wipe shit away. I don't even know how to fix something if I do too much. Ugh, I would just wash my whole fucking face and have to start over. Then I go in with this little brush. The way I use this contour palette, I don't know. I just kind of swipe across all three. I think the lighter shades are supposed to help the darker ones look more natural. Next is brows. This is my current favorite brow pencil. It's from Hourglass, the Arch Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil in Soft Brunette. And I don't think I do anything crazy with my eyebrows. I kind of just follow what it's naturally shaped like and then elongate it in the front because I don't have hairs in the front. It's kind of bad. You know, just giving myself a couple more hairs, not too many hairs, just enough for it to be believable. Yeah, I should tell you guys random facts about me. I'll think of five because I don't think we really know each other. Number one, I really like pickles. I named my fucking son after pickles because I like it so much. It's my favorite snack. Like I'll sit here and eat an entire jar of pickles. When I go to the grocery store, I have to come home with two. Sometimes I'll come with three depending on what I'm feeling like because I'll get Mount Olive and Clausen. Cause you never know if I want something more garlicky or a little more sour. Amber! I was trying to ask Amber to help me come up with one and the one that she gave was a bit too TMI for you guys. For now, for now, maybe I'll tell that story another day. But um, for now, number two, I guess I can just say I am a K-drama and anime enthusiast. Um, I really like watching that shit. Right now though, I'm kind of in a slump where I'm watching like a lot of American reality shows, so yeah number three i feel like i get this question a lot and i definitely got a lot when i was a waitress i am vietnamese american and i may or may not have a little bit of chinese in me we're not 100 percent sure i don't think i'll ever want to find out because i'm scared to take a 23 in me i don't know what they're using my dna for i'm good and i don't want anybody to come find me actually i don't know if that's even a thing do they give anybody who gets a 23 in me like access to other people so that if you do have other relatives they can come find you if you are open to it if you give it per give them permission or you have to give them permission in order to take the test. How does that work? Either way, I'm not doing it. Number four, I played a lot of sports growing up. I wouldn't say I was good. Actually, I'm not gonna say I was good because I fucking wasn't. I was always pretty average at everything. I think I'm built very athletic or I look like I'm athletic, but I'm really not. The only one that I would say I was decent at was cheer, competitive cheer, but even then I wasn't that good. This is the Day6 Shadow Palette in 24 Muted Nuts. I also mentioned this in my favorites. I usually go for like warmer, like pinky looking shades like these. It's also just very appealing. Like I think the palette itself is really cute, but I really enjoyed playing volleyball. I would say that one I was second best at which is not saying much. Primarily using these two shades. Depending on the day, I'll either use more of this or more of this. But lately, I've been doing more of the pink. I think it looks better with this blush, which I honestly might go back in with because you can never have too much blush, okay? There's no such thing as blush blindness. In my last video though, the egg yolk salad blindness was crazy. Now I use this. Sometimes I'll tap in between all three, but I mainly focus on that one, a little bit of this, and then do my egg yolk salad. I'm trying to focus on the cooler tone, like light brown right now, just so that it doesn't look as crazy as that did, as that, as that did, as it did in my favorites video. And I know a lot of people think or use the cool tone only on their egg yolk salad, but I mix it with the brown because again, I'm pretty sure I'm cool tone. And also because my eye makeup is so warm, the cool tone would just look weird. And then using the other side of the brush, going with something a little lighter to lighten down here. Sometimes I'll put glitter down here, sometimes I won't. I think today I won't. Five. I have five siblings. I have two older brothers, two younger siblings, Hope and Preston. You guys will probably see them very often in the vlogs. And then one that is in Australia. He's Australian. He didn't move to Australia. He's Australian. He's also younger than me. But of my siblings who I've grown up with, I am the middle child. Now, eyeliner. I really want to use this one. This one is my favorite one. Um, because it's so sharp. It's pretty much dried out at this point. So I've been using the Hold Live one, which is just as sharp. Pretty sure it's for Ego Sada and it's not for eyeliner, but it's 
pigmented enough for me to use it for eyeliner, so that's what I've been doing. But honestly, let me let me just try to use what I can. Mm -hmm. Eyeliner used to be my biggest fucking enemy, but I think it was because I was trying too hard to do it like the little white girls on YouTube when I was in high school, middle school, and I didn't know how to do it for somebody with my eye shape. My bad. Definitely longer than the other side, but it's dried out, so I do have to go in with this one. Like, do we see how sharp this is? Let me get my face out of the camera. Lately, as in the past like two days, I've been doing my inner corner a little bit, but these subtle like little things make such a difference because I've been lining my eyes longer. It'll make my eyeliner longer this way, but in doing that, it makes my eyes look further apart. So I need to add it in the corner as well so that it doesn't look like that. Okay, that's a lot more inner corner than I usually do, but, and why not? Let's try. Uh, okay, that was a little much. Oh, fuck. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have. No! Nobody's gonna be, nobody's gonna be looking at me. It's okay, except Amber. But it's fine, she'll live. My favorite part. One of my old childhood friends messaged me after watching my video last time. She was like, the skin is getting luminous. Carolyn, Carol, if you're watching, thank you. And it does come with this cute little Chanel brush, but I don't use it very often. I've been liking this brush. I can be a little more precise about where I put it. And I put it in my inner corner, but not just focus on like the circle here, or like that little dot there. I kind of put it like this. So that when I turn my head, there's like a glow there. You know what I'm saying? On that side as well, right here. And then I also like to put it on the center of my cheeks. I don't know, I think it looks cute and natural. Back in with this, God damn, it smells so good. I don't know if she did this on purpose, but the spray itself is, some of the other sprays that I'll use, they'll have like a horizontal spritz or it's just like, it just doesn't cover my entire face. This does. Like I can go like this once, maybe twice, because I have a longer head and it covers my whole face. And it's nice, okay? Lately, I've been liking this specific combo. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in Pinky Brown. I used to only go toward like more corally shades or just like not very pinky shades or nudes because I didn't think it looked good on me. But a lot of my really hot friends says that it does, so. Usually I'll go straight in with this, but I did find this. This is the Milk Makeup Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. This used to be my go-to, and then I would use the MAC Lustre Glass in PDA. So cute. This lip plumper doesn't hurt my lips. It tingles in a very satisfying, like, icy way. And I'm just gonna put this on top because I really like the shade. This is the Rode Peptide Lip Tint in Toast. This is from their Core collection, I believe. I don't apply mascara because I don't have eyelashes, okay? I will try to have all the products linked down below if you guys are interested in any of them, as well as like the hair clips and stuff I used. And yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one.